me and Jim are going to talk about the all so famous Evergreen Jackhammer Chatterbait. This Chatterbait has taken the bass fishing world by storm. You sell it on eBay for $40, $50 dollars when people would pay Back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah. When they weren't as readily available as they are now. Correct. Especially this color right here, the red. So, what makes an Evergreen Jackhammer Chatterbait so different than the rest? So I did a little research, I read in it to why. They say it's their stainless steel blade, how thin it is, the way it's shaped up front, and then it also has a Gamagatsu flipping hook in it to really reel in the big ones. They say with this blade being stainless steel and as thin as it is, it makes it start basically darting with this lower retreat. This bait was designed by Brett Height with conjunction of Evergreen and Z-Man. You know, why do you think it's so because Brett Height made it. That's probably <laughs> true. It's just got better components. The, um, the snap on it is a little bit wider and stuff, so it gives you the more side-to-side -side action. Um, the clip it, the way it attaches to the bait itself. The whole key to this thing is a patent where the blade attaches to it. It taps on the side of the head. That's what gives you your noise. Um, your 3 8 is by far your best size. And then I'd say probably half is the next. That's what basically what we throw the most. Uh, there's other companies out there that try to knock it off, but unless they pay for the rights of the patent, it's not the same. It doesn't work the same. So as he's speaking with weights, the biggest trick I'm gonna tell you guys right now is early season, use a lighter chatter. We think we need to reel it real slow, so we're gonna go to the half ounce and heavier. I'm gonna tell you right now that the 3 8 is the best because I can reel it 10 times slower than a half ounce and it doesn't get down in the bottom of the pond, pick up the dead leaf from the fall, you know, the dying vegetation. The 3 8 is the key that I use early spring. 3 8 and then you change, you can change your gear ratio on your reel to a, like a 6 3 to 1 or a 5 3 to 1 so you sit there and reel it super, super slow. Then after the spawn, I jump up to a seven because now it's more of a reaction right and I'm burning, especially Correct. for smallmouth. Absolutely. So another thing what we're saying is you can change the trailers on them to change up your speed and what you want it to do underwater. So today we're gonna go over, you know, the jackhammers versus the strike king cricket versus, you know, all the ones we can get our hands on, show you what they look like doing these different trailers. We're gonna have the Zako on it, which is a famous Gary Yamamoto bait, I want to say 80% of people nowadays use this as one of the trailers. It's still a great bait. I like to use that in the spring. And the reason for that, it gives it a lot more bulk. And it's, you know, springtime, you want a bigger bait, Absolutely. bigger um, They're trying profile to feed, and all that stuff, so you can move a lot more water that way. Trying to feed up for their spawn, kind of get fat and happy, kind of like all of us. Strike King, Menace. This is a real good thing because it actually imitates, you know, a crawfish. You can rig it two different ways. You can rig it flat on the bait, but actually when Strike Queen made it, they made it to make it look like a bluegill's tail. So you can rig it straight up and down and it has it kick side to side. Um, one of my other favorites is obviously, this is the Power Swimmer by Berkeley. Obviously he's got it on too. Great boot tail swim bait, swims very good, slow retreats, and it swims on the way down. I also like, it's a Venom called their Donkey Snatcher. And the reason I like that is because it's a very slender swim bait. Um, one thing is when you get this, it kind of gets a little bit baller. We all know when you have to cut down your trailers, it gets a little bit bulker profile and it kind of hits the water column and makes it react a little bit different. So sometimes I'll opt if I want to reel it faster for a smaller, slender style swim bait. Um, and we don't, I don't get wrapped up in a lot of color. No. I basically throw green pumpkin probably 90% of the time. And then if I'm fishing, let's say smallmouth, then I'll do my shads colored with a lot of chartreuse because smallmouth are such sight oriented feeding fish. You can pull those fish from a greater distance. Absolutely. But that's summertime and I'm burning it and I don't give a chance to look at it. It's more of a reaction strike. Jackhammers, they have chatterbaits of all shapes and sizes now. This is an ounce and a half. This is if you want to get out big deep with the big ones. I don't have much experience with it. I don't either. Um, this one's just a regular, you know, three quarters. Uh, this is the famous red one that everybody goes crazy for in the spring. Two years ago when they called them at Gunnersville, the yep. classic. That's what was the big deal then. 
And the reason I think this works really good in the springtime is a lot of the crawl dads are red when they come out. You know, very bright red, so fish key in on that because it's the first thing they see. And it's also a reaction bite. When you see that coming flying by your head, it looks like an orange streak, you're gonna eat it. But the crawfish is the highest protein that they can have in their diets, and that's why the females eat them, so that all that protein goes to their eggs for the spawn that's up and coming. Did you guys get that little nugget there? They'll throw those in throughout the video. So we're gonna quit talking to you. We're gonna show you what they look like, so let's get to it. All right. We're tossing in the jackhammer 3 8 chatterbait. It has a Yamamoto Zonko trailer on. We're gonna get you some footage up close and personal. We'll see if our little fishy friends eat anything, and then we'll explain a little bit more. enjoyed that because I sure know I did. So the biggest thing that I'm going to take away from doing this little experiment that we did between the cricket and the jackhammer. The reason we did these two chatterbaits is because these are, you know, the two leading chatterbaits out there right now. Everybody has their different chatterbaits, you know, the clasp, you know, the blade, the hook style, the keeper on it. So these are the two that I throw a lot of the times that kind of came to my mind I wanted to test because they are both very high dollar expensive chatterbaits. So I wanted to see, is it really worth spending, you know, the $16 or the, I believe the Strike King's $13, don't quote me on that. So what I'm gonna take away from this, the Strike King Cricket, great chatterbait, worked very well. I've been told a lot of times that the Cricket works better in cold water, which I would believe is true because if you watch the Cricket in the tank, it actually has a very tight wobble to it. So this corresponds to having a, you know, a flat sided crankbait in the cold water, like the Fritz side, because it's going to have a real tight wobble. The bait fish are very sluggish in the winter, don't want to move a lot, don't want to have, you know, burn a lot of calories basically. So that's why they're attracted to that very tight wobble. The jackhammer has a lot bigger blade action. You can see that, you know, it's basically swinging back and forth where the cricket is very tight and kind of more compact. 
But contrary belief, the jackhammers, I can reel it a lot slower than a cricket and still get the blade to turn. So, you know, going by my off judgment, I'm actually leaning more towards the jackhammer. Just because, yes, the cricket does have a very tight wobble, would be good. You can reel it really quick. But the jackhammer is I can do best of both worlds. I can reel it quick and I can also slow roll it. Well, I mean, we went down to a five geared one and just crawled it along the bottom and that blade was still kicking as hard as you would have if you were reeling it quick. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We didn't get too much into, you know, you got the stealth blades and like I said before, everybody has their own, you know, type of chatter bait and everything. We threw a couple trailers on there like a menace, a cross style, a paddle tail. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that see what they did the nice thing is with the menace is you can rig it two different ways right there we had it flat you can also rig it up and down and that's actually how it was intended to rig by striking it's supposed to look like a little bluegill tail so if you guys want to see anything in the tank a different chatterbait a different trailer anything drop a comment below and we'll be happy to test it out for you guys so you can see what it looks like Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We're going to get a lot more in-depth in these videos. So right now we're kind of keeping it basic. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Any questions or any comments or anything you guys want to see, drop a comment below and we'll get to it. Thanks, guys.